Well guys, uh, welcome to the uh, World Championship class here at the St. Louis Chess Club. Today I'm going to be covering a game of a player who's playing in the candidates this year. Uh, still, still competing at the highest levels, uh, Veselin Topalov. And he's not doing so well in the tournament so far, but as one of, he's been one of my favorite uh, players. And I wanted to cover a game from his uh, greatest uh, chess success. Um, that was winning the FIDE World Championship tournament in San Luis, Argentina in 2005. That was right around when I first started getting into chess. So he was uh, a player who I, I got to see and uh, look up to. Um, yeah, he's, uh, be, he's pretty well known for his uh, you know, uncompromising style, likes to play sharp positions. Definitely one of the best fighters in chess history. Um, yeah, and he's been world number one for you know, a serious amount of time in the past. So there's been some you know, other things that he's known for, you know, some certain matches he's had, but nonetheless, he's given a lot to chess and I wanted to cover a game. So the game we're going to look at today is Peter Leko against Veselin Topolov. Um, Peter Leko is white, Topolov is black. And yeah, for, for those who don't know, he, Topolov won this tournament. It was eight players, 14 rounds. And the winner became the world champion. Usually it's a match format. This was a tournament format. And he started off six and a half out of seven, which is one of the best starts in history. Maybe, maybe the best almost, but one, one of the best starts. And a lot of that had to do with him playing pretty sharp openings as black. He's a type of player who can uh, win, win, win and lose a lot because of his style and repertoire. So this game, he's playing black against Leiko. Uh, Leiko plays e4, c5. Uh, C you know, he's, he, especially back then, he played a lot more Sicilians over Berlins, let's say. Knight f3, d6, and they go into a Nidorf. These are the main moves. And just a little bit about the opening. White decided to play f3 here. The main benefit of f3 is you stop knight g4 variations. Bishop e3 are really one of the main moves. Knight g4, and this is an annoying variation in the opening. Um, the, the bishop doesn't get to stay st safely on e3. So f3, and then bishop e3 is the, the move order here. Uh, Topalov plays e6, bishop e3, b5, and yeah, th this opening, white queenside castle, castles, black usually kingside castles, it's a very sharp opening, um, which happens when, when, uh, when the kings decide to go on uh, opposite sides. But in this game, Topalov decided to play a very risky variation, which is not maybe fully correct, but he enjoyed, I mean, he, he plays lines that other people aren't willing to play, which is, uh, leads to more exciting games. So queen d2 is what Leiko played. This is all mainline stuff, because black, I mean, white wants the queenside castle, play, play, uh, play g4, and put pressure on black before <coughs> black is developed. If we see that white has spent more time developing pieces, black has spent more time developing pawn, pawns, so. You know that's why there's going to be some uh, di some counter some counterplay here, some some tactics because uh, the position is quite imbalanced already. He plays b4 right off the bat, a very aggressive move, kicking the knight away. The knight goes to a4 in this case. Knight could go somewhere else, but a4 is pretty safe if in case white has to. White can reinforce the knight with b3. But if you look at the knight here and the bishop here, there is some p potential on some squares like this. As long as that knight on d4 were to move away, the knight on a4 is not stuck on, on the rim the rest of the game. It has a, has a bit of a purpose. But this is a prepared variation. I mean, this, is, this was a tournament, so they're both pretty well prepared here. Black plays knight d7. Um, for those who don't know this opening well, um, the pawn on b4 is, white can take the pawn on b4. That is not defended. That, that, is, that is a feature in this opening. Queen takes b4, could have been played, but Black has d5, and it's really a, you know, um, d5, attacking the queen on b4, and hitting the pawn on e4, and things get very, 
very complicated, but black is recapturing the pawn on e4 next move and regaining the material and opening the position up, which is just people who play this as black kind of uh, you know want, want that type of open open position with a lot of counterplay. So white white doesn't take the pawn there. Instead, continues playing principle, just queenside castling. I mean, you can take next move and, and whatnot, but you want your you know get the rook into the game. So now, now after queenside castling, um, the ball plays d5, and you know for for newer players, this is this is some almost unorthodox chess. Black is not developing, black is not castling, and still playing with the pawns almost entirely. There's only two pieces developed, the knight on d7 and knight on f6. And yeah, that's just you know not what they, they teach you to do. Develop your pieces, get your king safe, and then do stuff like this. So um, this is very risky play. E e even, for, even for a top player who, who knows the structure, this is, this is risky play that uh, black is un undertaking here. So after d5, White does a principled response, just takes on d5. Opening, when you're ahead in development, you want to open up the position. So, um, takes on d5. Otherwise, otherwise, the pawn is being attacked, though. That is, that is something. I mean, it would be undesirable to play bishop d3 to defend this pawn on e4. That was being attacked twice because that bishop also blocks the queen on d2 and the rook, which had, they had some potential uh, on, the, on the d file. Um, but now they're blocked by the bishop. So, so white decides to take. Now, you don't want to have an isolated pawn normally, so black takes back with the knight. He takes d5. Isolated pawns are not, not what you want. Knight takes d5. But the position really uh, hinges on tactics here. Black, black is, is way behind the development, but, but uh, still, still alive here. Bishop c4, bringing the last piece in, and keeping the files open. You know, now rook h1. And yeah, I mean, honestly, to me, the position looks quite, uh, quite decent for white. It's a sharp game, but white, white, white should be pretty happy with how things are going. So I mean, but this, this was expected for, from black playing this, this variation. He's a uh, Playing with fire here. So after bishop c4, knight uh, knight f6. Otherwise, if you were to play like bishop e7 and try to castle, I mean, knight c6 and black is just getting killed. If I were to show you from the white's perspective, this is like an amazing, amazing position. Just all the pieces are developed. Everything is everything is going badly for black here. Um, the queen has to move. The d, d file is about to be taken, so black has to play very, very precisely. So he plays knight f6, and now it's a bit different. If knight c6 here, the queen will go to c7, and it's not not game over yet. I mean, the Sicilian is very much a tempo opening, and and here, here still still no clear way for white to break through. These knights are very, very solid. White would need more, more pieces into the attack. I'll, but yeah, things can get really dangerous quickly here. Um, to show us a game, they, they play this opening, um, a game that had happened before this, I think, um, or around the same time, with, was, uh, which kind of shows what happens when black doesn't play this properly. I want to go into it because it doesn't go very long. As black played bishop b7. Topolov played a different move. The bishop b7 looks very natural, developing and defending the knight. After the natural moves, rook h1. Black played queen a5 here. Try to get the queen away from the d file. Maybe queenside castle or something and attack the knight. Knight takes e6. So this was a game, and it was a, ended up being China's future number one player when he was just a kid, Wang Hao, uh, who is now still uh, one of the top players in the world. But he was, he was a kid here, he was white, and just knight takes e6, and it just shows. Um, knight takes e6, giving up the full piece, f e6, bishop b6. White just, you know, through the kitchen sink at black, 
right right off the bat. Like this is only 15 moves in. I mean, I'll show it from White's point of view. Queen a5, knight takes e6. Black takes, I mean, has to take that knight. It's and bishop e6. Pretty a pretty uh, pretty a powerful po powerful game from White. That that was one of the reasons why. I mean, this this line doesn't have a very good reputation as Black. They just, they just never survive uh, until they get all their pieces out. So the word you use in chess usually for lines like that is dubious, like a dubious variation. Um, so bishop b6, you know, and this is just, this is just terrible. Moves like this, bishop d5. It's, it's not, not looking good. I mean, the way the game went, just to go quickly, bishop, after bishop b6, queen a4, bishop d5, Bishop e7 instead, and now like White just has so much compensation for the piece. If Black can 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 get the king safe, obviously Black would be okay, but that's just it's too late now. So the miniature of this game finished very quickly. Bishop takes b7, knight takes b6, rook takes e6, castles. Rook takes e7. So now white's up two pawns. Instead of taking the rook on a8, just took the free piece, up two pawns. And um, after queen takes a2, queen d4, threatening checkmate. And then knight on b6. Um, rook f6 was played, bishop takes a8, and the game was uh, over. So that was a nice game. That's this line isn't played very much, but that shows. That's kind of like shows what happen, happens often is white gets all the pieces in right away with with the sacrifice, sure. But black is so behind in development that sacrifices are possible. So this was this was like just a slaughter that had happened in the same variation. So some similar themes there, but fortunately he played knight f6, avoiding that because it does it look like it didn't look like almost anything was missed in that game. That was pretty convincing. So after knight, knight, knight f6, black played, uh, white played bishop g5. That's nice. I mean, wants to open up the file for the rook. And, you know, that bishop doesn't necessarily want to give up that bishop anyway. So, you know, just, just improving where the bishop is and freeing up the e file for the rook. Um, now there is also a strategical threat. Um, Like bishop e7, well, just like okay, knight c6 is annoying, but yeah, bl white is also threatening to just take. There's, this is a pretty annoying pin. Ideally, those knights would like to uh, take back. So if bishop takes f6, ideally, black would want to take back with a knight. That doesn't want any isolated pawns. And same here. So that's why black played queen c7. If if bishop takes d5, now the knight can take back because the queen's no longer pinned. So. It's just moving the queen out of the way, but like still, still the development isn't really being fixed there. Um, yeah, and if Topolov had played some other move, almost any other move, you might already be lost. Although in the game, still found himself in some trouble. Um, but yeah, move like Bishop B7, which I keep seeing. Rook H1, so natural. Bishop E7. You have to deal with moves like knight f5. Pretty thematic, pretty thematic move. Dangerous ideas here, so. Slip through them a little bit. Queen c7. And now bishop takes d5 was played. I mean, the queen was attacking the bishop, and if any, let's say bishop b3. Maybe something like h6. You know, there are some, there's a chance that black might get to escape. Maybe bishop h4, bishop d6, with the idea of developing the bishop and trying to castle and play also threaten bishop f4. Black, black, black is probably getting away. 
It's a really, really tactical game. So, you know, um, Black's main counterplay is, is going to be with like, uh, like di dynamic, just making threats. Not go he's not going to be able to really develop in a, in a safe way. But moves like this, like bishop d6, that develop and also have a threat. That's, that's how Black's trying to hold the balance. So um, White didn't really want to give that time. So after bishop, bishop takes d5, knight takes d5 here. Again, like taking with the pawn is just really bad. Rook h1 check. You got to, you know, play bishop e7 and you, you, so, something like this is already just losing, losing just. Black is totally busted. Queen takes f6. I don't know. All the moves are, are very bad. So, I mean, these are all forced moves. Knight takes d5. Next move for white, pretty self-explanatory. Um, rook hg1. I'm not sure I would have given up the bishop on d5, but white, the black still isn't out of the woods yet. So after rook h1, there's still still some ideas on the on the e file. I mean, you know, if bishop e7, I'm not even entirely sure. But moves like knight f5 look look pretty pretty scary. An example: e takes f5, and queen takes d5, hitting the rook on a8 and threatening. Rook takes e7. So, um, I mean, I, it's, these are positions I, I don't play myself. It's just, it's very, you have to be, you have to be really in form and making sure you're seeing all the tactics. Because if you slip up any, any single move, uh, it's just losing for, for black, so. Bishop d5, knight d5, rook h1, g1, and now bishop b7. So knight takes e6 here, for those one, I mean, you know, it's not it's not quite enough probably. With the knight not you know, the knight the king the king seems to escape. It might be able to like even hide to G eight, I'm not sure, but it's not uh super clear. But it's not convincing for white for sure. There are no more checks and uh, or clear forcing moves. So bishop B seven Leiko found a pretty good move. Queen to e2. Also, I have to say, at this moment, Peter Leiko was um, around the peak of his career. Um, he had just tied a match against Vladimir Kramnik, where he almost, you know, won the match. He lost the final game, and uh, you know, he was he was ranked top five in the world at this moment. So these were, this was he he was a very very strong player with White, <coughs> and. He has a pretty serious advantage in, in this position, very well prepared and, and not really uh, making uh, any inaccuracies so far. So, okay, um, queen, yeah, so queen e2. It's threatening knight takes e6 now, though. If the queen takes on e6, that's a whole different story. Right, so like bishop e7, knight takes e6, it's a very obvious, you know, and queen takes. And this is just, you know, lost. Once again, black is losing because even though white's down material, in the attack, white is up material. The rook on eight, rooks on eight, eight and h8 are not in the game. So this, these positions just fall apart. So after queen e2, I mean, black, black has, some, has some really, really serious issues anyways. Um, because bla black ended up playing queen d6, there aren't too many, unfortunately there are not, not so many moves to play here. Knight takes e6 is happening. Queen d6, some pretty, you don't want to move your queen too much in the opening, but in this case there's no other way to stop knight takes, knight takes e6. There's no even like in between moves or counterplay. Yeah, so knight of four, knight of four. So knight of four, um, I'm thinking potentially taking, taking, and king b1. Yeah, queen d6. 
a pretty artificial move, but necessary. And now King B1 was played, and that's so 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 typical like of style, just a prophylactic move. Black still has some issues to solve, <coughs> but it was what, one moment in the game. There was others as well where White could have uh, used that time, this move, to really put pressure on Black. Anyone have some ideas for, for white here? Instead of king b1, white had f4. f4 is very annoying. Um, because like bishop e7, yes, you know, knight f5 now, uh, potentially. Good for, good for white, but the the real, so after f4, yeah, knight, knight, knight f4, you know, same thing, take on f4, play king b1 and sacrifice on e6. Um, h6 is a move that can look a bit annoying because bishop h4, queen takes f4. But uh, I think here, he didn't look any further because, you know, a move like, yeah, there's, there aren't too many moves for white here. The, the dark sword bishop is super important. If, if, it, if it goes away, then black is safe to play bishop e7 or something. But there's like knight takes e6, same idea. But now queen h5 check. And then queen to, to f7. A sample line would be something like bishop e7, and rook takes e6. <coughs> with knight c5. Tons of pins all over the place. White lost this game, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll see, but you know, it, it miss, missed some chances so far. Um, f4 is maybe the first. The first stat is, you know, not, not the hardest to see even. So, queen d6, king b1. Now h6 was played, so, I mean, white was right to anticipate h6, but there were, were tactics to, to stop it. And, and once again, after here, I mean, f5 is also a pretty strong threat next move, just playing f5 as well. So, it's pretty forcing for black. Um, in terms of what black can try. So after um, h king b1, h6, bishop h4. Well, now the bishop is, is uh, it can be blocked at some point with g5, but first knight f4. Now, I mean, now black can breathe Bit of, you know, uh, some some relief here. Like, it's not. Th there's no longer f4 coming in, but uh, he still can't play bishop e7. So he plays knight f4, <coughs> queen f2, and queen c7. So this sequence, knight f4, trying to get the king uh, queen off of the e file. You can't play queen e3. You can't play queen e4. You can play queen e5, which would just lose. To, to knight g6. Some tactics. I mean, at this, I'm sure white played the next move very quickly because just out of principles, uh, like principle the response here is you don't want to trade queens. Your head in development is white. You want to attack. You want to keep pieces on the board. So there are very few moves that would like uh, work for that. Uh, queen d2 and queen f2. So white's definitely trying to, to get black before black can consolidate and castle. So after queen f2, queen c7, Leiko finally now, he's played it, you know, just makes a more committing move. Knight f5. The truth is, I mean, this position looks really, really risky to me for black. It still looks very good for white, and not many people would play this type of position or, or go into these positions and, and have uh, some sort of confidence. But Tobal, Tobalov is a player like that. Knight, so I mean, here you can't play bishop e7. You have almost no moves as white uh, as black. Oh. 
But Knight F5 gave the ball some, some fresh air that wasn't necessary. He took the chance here and got some of his pieces out. What, what, what should he do with black here? There aren't actually any, almost any moves, so if you find any reasonable move, it might already be correct. Any Sicilian players here? What do you do is black. I mean, you, you can make some weaknesses. Black's already made a lot of weaknesses. Just keep, keep, keep the position alive. G5 here? There you go, G5. Right. Yep. G5. That, you know, that bishop was way too strong on, on H4. G5. Bishop G3. And now Rook C8. Instead, instead of knight f5, actually, um, white had another interesting move um, that had to do with this knight on a4. Knight b6, trying to get the knight into the game. That's an important thing. Obviously, you can't do queen takes b6, knight takes e6, and, you know, double checkmate, you know, or knight c7. And, and, and the issue with these positions is material doesn't matter that much in the sense that, let's say queen takes e6, rook takes e6, knight takes e6. Black has two pieces and a rook for a queen. That's often, that's normally supposed to be worth more than a queen, 11 points to 9. But because of the, the position and development, black's never going to you know, see, that, uh, see, that, see those, that rook or anything, just something like queen b6 here. And yeah, development... Uh, He's going to lose the material bef before you can ever try to consolidate. So material, yeah, material doesn't doesn't matter too much. Knight, knight b6 would have been a very very strong move. Rook b8, knight f5 now. But anyways, knight f5 still doesn't lose the advantage. Black can't be, you know, that comfortable even here after rook c8. But probably pretty happy that some, some lines were, were missed. So after rook c8, now, okay, c2 is being hit. Rook c8 is almost always where the rook goes in Sicilian. Um, that is where there's a c file for black, uh, a free file. Like, that's, that's, that's usually the open file for black, so... Um, and besides, there's no way for black to castle. So he's trying to make as many useful moves in this position as possible. Pretty much every single position is like black is making a move to extend his position, give himself one more move. Uh, there's always only one or two moves in each and every position, but as long as he's still, uh, still breathing, then he's, uh, he's happy. So after rook c8 here, what's a pretty natural move for white? I guess it's not that natural in some ways, but pretty, pretty strong. What Leiko did here was queen d4. So c2 is hanging. The rook on h8 is hanging. And I think also you just, I think white's confident that in case there's a big ta tactical sequence, white will, you know, end, uh, end up ahead. Usually the, 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 the side with the better developed pieces, you know, is, is going to win these uh, trades. Like if queen, takes, if, you, if queen takes c2, check where to happen, you know, just king a1 and h8 is hanging. Uh, and uh, black doesn't have any time to, to win any material. Queen d7 is checkmate, so it doesn't, black can't really go, go for that pawn. So it's a pretty immediate response by to possibly rook, G, rook g8. So now, I mean, white has been playing a bit more aggressively, and I mean, can you improve the position almost any more for white? I mean, the only other thing is to get that knight on knight from a4 into the game. So knight b6, yeah, feel free to ask uh, any suggestions, because there are a lot of options. It's a very sharp position. So what happened in the game, more things could have, like, the game is only a glimpse into what could have happened in the position, both, especially white had lots of options here. Knight b6, maybe, Rook, rook d8 here, 
You're saying of bishop c5, queen d7, right? Yeah. Queen takes d7, knight takes here, and knight f6 check is coming. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, after knight b6, I'm guessing rook d8 is going to be the move. Although, you know, even then, let's say quit, tr trade everything off. Hmm. It still doesn't look. Uh, I guess. No, I guess it's okay. I guess black might be escaping. Yeah, there's two knights hanging here. So knight b6, rook d8. Which is similar to what happened in the game. Um, I think here white, white got very frustrated. The thing is, so the time situation in this game is interesting. Um, white had spent a lot of time looking for clear wins and was getting into time trouble. Probably part of it's a bit of frustration that nothing's been found yet. I mean, the position can hardly, like, it's, white's done almost everything. Like, knight's on f5. The knight on f5 is normally very, like, this is really strong. Bishop on g3 is pinning a knight. Got the open d file. Knight on a4 is is good and bad. But there was a chance er earlier to activate it, but you ju you just think when your opponent's king is in the center that you could do a bit better. And after all all this, White made a very like big big mistake in this position. Rook g8, you know that's a natural. And now a big mistake from White. White played c3, trying to get the knight into the game. You know, pawn takes c3, knight takes c3, probably. Because with the rook on g8, white's not even worried about black developing because the king's never castling. So like bishop c5 here, okay, you can play knight d6 anyways, but probably something like queen f6. Like there's just, the king is permanently stuck there. There's no more castling anymore, nothing, so. White was banking on, on just getting that knight back into the game like that. Or if not, you know, if something like a5, maybe, you know, take, you know, playing, playing like rook c1 or taking here and opening it up. But c3 was a big time trouble mistake. So yeah, rook d8 was played. And unfortunately, white has to trade on d8. Because if you move the queen away anywhere, black's next move is going to be rook d8 takes d1. And that'll deflect the rook from the e-file, which means the knight on f5 will be free to take. So the queen has to take on d8. There's no like good square on another file. Um, if queen, if queen e3, I think. What happens if queen e3? I'm trying to remember. Queen e3 might be a move. Um, I think Leiko was probably worried about you know moves like. Rook takes, rook takes, maybe like queen c6. I don't know. Um, knight takes. The move here, actually, I think bishop c6. I think bishop c6 was the move. And I think the idea there is like if you play knight b6 to play bishop c5. Like every single move, like, you know, these games take a lot of energy for the players. So, so White really was, uh, finally made a mistake after getting in time trouble. But yeah, maybe, maybe Bishop C6 and there's no good way to move the Knight. You can't put it on C5 and otherwise, you, you have to end up trading Queens or, or the piece anyways, Bishop C5. The tactics are starting to work for Black. So White, I mean, fortunately has to trade everything off. Knight e3. But now, I mean, this end game, this is where black, black, black has his chance. Bishop c6 first, precise. You don't want to take on c3. You want to play bishop c6 so that you can cripple white's pawn structure next move. So knight b6, pawn takes c3, pawn takes c3, and bishop g7. 
What happened in the middle of the game was kind of reminiscent to a few games that Topal have had in this tournament. Um, there's you know a few sharp games, but he emerged ahead in all of them, like risky positions, whatnot. But but in this tournament, he was coming out of the middle of the games uh, as the one uh, ahead, and and when that happens, then it's all about converting. And this is this is a now it's now it's just the conversion part. Black is better because of the two bishops. That's that's as simple as that. Better pawn structure, two bishops. Um, White's knights are pretty pretty bad here. They don't have like solid squares. No no good outposts. So after taking on c3, bishop g7, bishop takes f4. Otherwise the knight has to stay on e3. G2 is always hanging. So bishop f4. You don't really have too many other moves. King has to go to c2 otherwise to defend c3. But at some point, the bishop, yeah, the, the knight doesn't want to be tied down to g2. So bishop takes f4, g takes f4. I mean, psychologically, it's hard to play this as white. You were ahead in the game, took too much time, couldn't find a winning attack, probably got obsessed with one or two moves that didn't end up working, and now you have to suffer a very unpleasant end game. So, um, so white, yeah, this, is, this, this part of the game was... Um, Pretty, pretty uh, difficult for white to hold. Knight d1, bishop b5, trying to play king c7, next move, and trap the knight. So the a4 was played. The idea is if that a move like c c4 is played, black is just happy to have that diagonal open, and they're just going to move, you know, the the bishop back and play like king c7, bishop d4, or even bishop d4 right now. Yeah, bishop d4 right now is probably the straightforward reply, no matter what white does, bishop d4, or king c7. So provoking, you know, uh, holes, because bishops, bishops uh, operate well with, with weaknesses and with the pawns further advanced and, and weaker, the bishops do well. So now it's just the two bishops against two knights. A4 was played. Bishop D3 check. K king C1. Now King C7. A5. Cute little move here. Bishop H8. Opening up the G file, which not only works to hit the pawn on g2, but you might want to just swing your rook along the fifth. First, bishop b5. And now white was in time trouble, as I said, for the rest of the game. And there's not really a good way to defend g2, which is very annoying. If you try to, yeah, you don't really have a good way of def defending g2. If you move the knight, just bishop f5, and you're hitting c3 and g2 anyways. So. So king d2, bishop b5, rook g1, now bishop c6, so bishop takes f3, is coming, king e2, defending that, bishop e5, so if you move like knight c4, bishop b5, so you can't even, you can't move that knight away. And bishop e5, one of the ideas is maybe to just play calm, bishop d6, bishop c5. That's why, yeah, you know. In the Sicilian, the two bishops is very important usually. It's because it's really, really open. So c4, bishop d4, knight f2. Next move for black here. Black's been making weaknesses for the last 10 moves. Yeah, exactly. Bishop c3. Bishop c3. Not even like, you know, why give up the bishop pair to win a pawn when you can just win a pawn cleanly? So, bishop c3. 
the the collapsing position is pretty fast if you guys have noticed like white had all the pieces around the king and now almost nothing no counterplay knight e4 bishop takes a5 c5 knight's trapped f5 and uh, white resigned um, not really any good moves here. You'd have to move your knight back. You can't really go forward. Knight d6 is impossible. Knight f6 gets kicked out right away. And then you'll lose the second pawn on... Uh, I mean, yeah, you're going to lose the second pawn on c5. But um, this game is very typical of uh, Topalov. He's, he's really a fighter at the board, and he, you know... Not always the best prepared, although he's well prepared, but relies a lot on his energy during the game and and surviving the tactics. But this was this was one of this was one of the most important games that he won to get the world championship because in this in this uh, in this game he was he was objectively lost actually. For example, in that knight b6 variation, uh, the complications don't turn out well. There's quite a few quite a few very very difficult variations here, but. Um, just one slip up really, one slip up already and he played everything else very precisely. So it's, I enjoy studying his games because, you know, whether he's on the good side or the bad side, there's tons of tactics and, you know, themes going on that are pretty, uh, pretty good for anyone wanting to study, you know, open positions or, or calculation, any, anything sharp. So that, that's, that's, uh, it's a game, Leiko Topolov, San Luis, 2005, that, uh, that he survived. Yeah.